Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, one last one here for this go around. Again, thank you so much for your suggestions. This one in particular has been one that was suggested for a good time period, multiple times in the past, so I thought I would go ahead and cover it here because it does have some very interesting information with regards to this cryptid. In particular, are the circumstances about it apparently in it being in existence for a good while back then like a couple hundred years back then there's a brief lapse and then cut to around this time period and it seems to have made a return so that definitely stood out with regards to its existence so this one though is kind of a cryptid in the sense that it, you take a normal animal and then you make it almost abnormally in size and then make it almost Neanderthal like like exaggerated features if you mix that together then you get this weird cryptid and it's called the beast of Dean although in other terms it's called the moose pig and you're looking at a picture of it here and reportedly it is still around a very specific spot in this world that if you go there to this day you can absolutely hear its hallmark roar which happens to be its most distinct feature so lots of good information to talk about so uh, let's go ahead and we'll start here so what is the beast of Dean well again as I mentioned just a little while ago it's if you take a wild boar a regular animal in this case a wild boar but you made it abnormally larger, much larger, maybe like the size of a bear. It seems to be that size. Then on top of that, you add some Neanderthal-like features, like in this case, exaggerated cheekbones, exaggerated snouts, maybe even, let's say, its tusks, rather than having two, like boars you normally have, um, add maybe two more, or maybe four more. And then on top of that, add more of a large, bushy fur, just completely wild and then on top of that add a huge huge roar I mean very very distinctive you add all those compounds together and that's what you get here you get the beast of Dean and its location is one reported area it's at a place called the Royal Forest of Dean which is somewhere I believe on the southwest of the United Kingdom it's a place called Gloucestershire, Gloucestershire, if I'm saying it correctly. So, if you happen to be near that area, and let's say you're lucky or unlucky enough, based on some of the reports that you'll hear there about its encounters, and you happen to hear its roar, then you absolutely know that you're near its area. So, so the first reported known instance of this beast of Dean, you have to go back a good while to 1802. That's when apparently sightings first started there in the forest of Dean. Again, that's why it's called the Beast of Dean. This mainly because of its location. Some locales, uh, some locals there started stating that they would hear an unearthly roar, that's their quote, followed by the sound of trees being pushed down. Not because of trees, let's say, falling down on their own just through uh, rotted bark or in other happenstance circumstances no in this case something was actually tumbling down those trees and then on top of that they would hear the sound of something like trampling very very fast very hard uh, usually the sound associated with hedges uh, bushes just something very large moving very fast within that area and then People around that location, those that had fences, also found their fences destroyed as well. So whatever this thing was, was not only roaming that forest, but it seemed to also go around its area to the homes localized around that forest too. Finally, um, no real reports real though about anyone, let's say, experiencing any kind of damage or any hurtful circumstances, but these hunters some hunters there in that area finally decided they were going to do something about this creature and so they went on the hunt and lo and behold they were able to actually capture this creature if the tales are true uh with 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 the legend of the beast of dean they captured it and then they actually killed it as well and that's when they were able to get a, f a good first-hand look at what they were experiencing obviously it would look like a boar but it was unlike any other type of boar that they ever heard of uh, or ever seen and so that was that any time between that period because when the killing was done it was done in March 1807 so about five years after the first sightings began 
anytime after that, that's when for the next almost 200 years or so, there was no other sightings. So no one physically saw anything else in terms of another beast of Dean around that area. Now that being said, it seemed like throughout the rest of the next two centuries, people would still hear though that gigantic roar, whatever that roar was. Imagine like uh, just your average horror movie where they have some ungodly roar associated with some monster imagine that with this beast of dean and that's what people would hear throughout that forest for the next 200 years so there was rampant speculation that while they may not have seen any other beast of dean or some of its kin around that area they definitely heard it now cut to 1998 so not too far as back almost 20 years or so and then that's when two locals around that area a guy by the name of James Nash and then someone else by the name of Marshall Davies they happened to be passing by that woodland area between two locations called Park End and Bream if someone lives near that location if they can point out like where that is that that would be very helpful but otherwise they were passing by that particular spot and it seemed like they were doing so at night because uh, later on the way their experience was having to involve a spotlight or in this case um, one of those street lights that's when it seemed like it was at night so there they were passing by when that strange thing happens it's that thing where let's say you're walking in the forest and you're hearing the usual sounds associated with the forest maybe the chirping of birds or the whistling of of other animals uh, other I guess trees but everything suddenly goes silent when that happened that's when they heard a low sound that that they described it as a low sound that started rising in intensity something was nearby their area and when whenever that occurred that after that silence and then followed by that intensing whatever that sound was slowly rising in intensity they heard the rustling of leaves and then they saw something they couldn't really describe what it was because again it seemed like it was at night but whatever, whatever it was though it was a large very large size and in that darkness they saw it whatever this black mass was running straight to towards them obviously now instead of this thing rustling through the area now it was definitely targeting them so when that happened these two guys naturally they just ran as fast as they could towards the edge of the forest they were able to I guess outrun it how I don't know um, normally like I've seen animal shows especially when having to do with boars they can run pretty fast um, it, it's just their deal whenever it comes to their size so something much larger you would think that it would have a much quicker step but in this case they were able to outrun it and when they did so uh, running for their lives they emerged from that forest into what was described a well-lit road so there were some street lights there in that area too and then they ran towards the village and that's whenever they heard that whenever that happened that's when they heard the next thing because it seemed like this thing whatever it was that was chasing them which was presumably the beast of Dean decided that that was it that it was out of their territory maybe that's what it was doing all the whole time they encroached on its territory so it was just getting them out of there and when that occurred and it was truly sensing that they were out of its area then it let out another unearthly roar something really really bad with the kind of roar again that you don't want to hear ever in your life and the men knew that this thing was no longer going to chase them but obviously they got a huge scare of their life so that is at least the latest experience about the Beast of Dean. Nothing else reported afterward. So you have the brief time period in the early 1800s, a good five years or so until this thing was killed. Nothing really other than roars for the next 200 years. And then finally, a one-on-one, -on -one, I guess you could call it, like an uh, experience with this Beast of Dean. But that's been it. Nothing else since 1998. Nothing in terms of any encounters within the years 2000 or nothing else in terms of encounters in other locations too so that's all the information really associated with the beast of dean if anyone lives near that forest by the way or has gone by that forest that forest of dean and knows more uh, information about this local legend please post those comments below that'd be really great to hear no doubt um people that have lived there or have visited have some kind of of generational stuff where people report tales from one 
from one generation to another so if, if anyone has anything like that that would be good to hear some people have even speculated that this thing whatever it is this beast of dean may be another long lost creature of some sort maybe a throwback to not really necessarily the dinosaur age but the age associated with mammals when they were um I guess larger back then so this thing may be just something related to it or it could be a true cryptid like a one shot deal something involving it and unnecessarily being um, for whatever reason when it was born it was born much much larger than your average boar and when that happened then maybe it had some more kin and then that's when um, I guess the beast of Dean uh, the animal kingdom of it stays there within that forest what's interesting though is it hasn't never really branched out if it truly is there it has never really branched out to any other locales it has absolutely kept its home there even after 200 years so that's also pretty fascinating too so all right everybody Thanks again as always. Take care.